David Rocker, the senior pastor here at the Connection Church. I also like to welcome all of you who are watching via YouTube channel. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Connection Church. Let me also say Happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers. That's my proper way of saying it. To all you mothers. Let me also say Happy Mother's Day to all you mamas around here. To all you mamas. Let me let all the mothers stand up in here. Mothers, stand up. Even if you don't have a biological child, you know, you, you, you're a mother to so many nieces and nephews. Come on, give these mothers a hand clap of praise. We salute you. I want you to know, mamas, listen, I see you. I know what you have gone through and what you are going through, but I want you to know that God, listen, God is on your side. You hear me? God is on your side. Embrace today. Embrace today as we celebrate you. Listen, this is just a small sermonette. Embrace today as we celebrate you for being, listen, the mother that you are. Let me make something very clear. I'm not talking about the personal you. I'm talking about the mother. You may still have your issues and your flaws, but you're a good mother. And I want you to know that I see you and I appreciate you. And most of all, God loves you. And let, let me tell you something. If you stay close to God, he'll stay close to you. If you talk to him, he will lead you and he will guide you. Let me tell you something. Don't you give up on God because he will never, ever give up on you. Amen. God bless all you mothers. Thank you all so much. So much. So much. So much. Also, let me say this. If you are a first-time visitor, do we have any first-time visitors here? If you're a first-time visitor, wave your hands in the air. Wave them like you just don't care. Amen, amen, amen. All right, come on, Connection Church family. Let's love on these visitors here. Just go ahead and greet them. Let them know that they are home. They are home. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. mothers receive their roses today. Did you receive your roses when you came in? Praise God. I'd like to thank the Connect Ladies. The Connect Ladies. They were responsible for those roses. Passing those roses out. Thank you so much. Amen. Just making sure Special presentation. Good morning, everyone. If I could have my connect ladies that are here this morning come up here with me. so blessed to have the most beautiful, amazing, gifted, talented first lady. <laughs> On behalf of the Connect Women, we just want to just say thank you for being who you are, being who God created you to be. You're so beautiful inside and out. bless everybody to have her as our leader and we want to welcome all the women who are not up here on this stage to come and join us on May the 20th for our next lunch you don't have to be a member we just want to connect with you but we just want to today honor and celebrate this great woman of God for being who she is can we give God the glory first lady love you, and we thank you for every minute 
of the day. Because we know that her life is for God in this ministry. We love you. mention very quickly, uh, going back to uh, last Sunday, you know we have uh, on first Sundays, we have corporate prayer, and we decided to add a little touch last weekend, serve some popcorn at the end of service, and I just want y'all to know, I know we shouldn't judge, but I'm judging, some of y'all just need to be ashamed of yourself, the way you all attack that popcorn, I mean, get one or two bags, don't, I think somebody's about to fight the lot over the popcorn. Just lose your religion. But no, but did y'all enjoy the popcorn last, last week? Amen. Good. Good. That's one of the things that we will do on every first Sunday. So just be prepared that we will be having popcorn for you on your way out on, on first Sunday. Also, have a quick presentation for all the moms here. And uh, I'm just going to say this. One of the things that we were doing, as they say, secretly, I wanted the kids to just to kind of record a small message to their mom. Just letting them know, happy Mother's Day, how much they love, how much, how much they love their mom. But you know, every now and then you'll have that one kid who just truly want to express what his mom means. I'll just let the video speak. What would you like to tell your mom? Happy Mother's Day, I love you so much. So I love my mom because many times she does some very fun stuff for me <clears throat> and my sister. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. And, she, and yesterday, um, she also took my sister and me to a graduation. I mean, not a graduation, like a contest, and it was very fun. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. Happy Mother's Day, Alan. And a lot of times, my mom lets me do stuff that um, usually other people's moms would say no to. Hey, mom, and happy Mother's Day. I am appreciative of you because you helped me learn and you helped me become who I have. Happy Mother's Day. Like, if I can have candy after I eat and everything, and um, my mom also lets me have big pieces of cake and a lot of times. I'm appreciative, appreciative of my mom because she's caring and she takes care of her family. Happy Mother's Day. And she lets me cut the cake by myself. Hi mom, I just want to say thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for teaching me the things I need to know and to learn. And I'm very grateful for you. So happy Mother's Day. Mom, I would like to thank you for everything you gave to me. My games, stuff, my bedroom. And Dad, I want to thank you for taking care of us every day and giving us a place to stay. And Happy Mother's Day, Mom. And I also love her because a lot of times she gets me toys. And a few months ago, I asked her next time we go to Target, can I get Transformer toys? And she said yes. And that comes from our, our Connect Kids. Well, all our Connect Kids, helpers stand up, who just work with the Connect Kids to do that. I know all of them will stand up. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. And of course, that was, that was Brother, Brother Jacoby, who just 
Everyone else had their little seven second blurbs, but he had a full minute. I said, I cannot cut this. Let me just go ahead and edit, edit that in. So uh, God bless you all. We'll now have a selection from Sister Joyce. I'm sorry, before the selection, we're going to have First Lady come share a poem. just like a mom to me, and uh, hope that it blesses you as well. Father, thank you for giving us moms. There's no way to measure how much they bring to our lives, and we're so grateful for their love, care, and sacrifice. We ask that you help every mother to see herself through your eye as a beloved child, fearfully and wonderfully made. Help her to understand that you created her with everything necessary to be the mother her children need. Lord, we pray that you give every mother encouragement, wisdom, and strength, and show them that their hard work is not only noticed, but also has eternal significance. Jesus, we lift up any moms who are struggling right now. We know that being a mom can be tough, so we ask that you ease their burdens and fill them with your peace. Give them the rest and endurance they need. Jesus, we ask that every mother feel your love and presence always. And Father, we pray for those who long to be mothers but have not yet been able to conceive. We pray you comfort them and let them know you are aware of their deep desire and teach them to trust in your goodness and your plans for their lives. And finally, we ask you to bless every mom out there with a community of support. We know motherhood can be lonely sometimes and that every mom needs help. So we ask you to surround them with friends, family, and all who can be there for them to offer practical help and give them encouragement when they need it. Thank you so much for giving us moms, Father. We know that you're one of the greatest blessings in our lives, and we know that they are as well. And we ask that you continue to guide and bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand for worship.
Heavenly Father, have your way in this place, Lord God. Move like you've never moved before, Lord God. For Father, we are here today because we hunger and thirst for righteousness, Lord God. To be in right standings with you. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Repeating after me, connecting with God. In order to know, grow, and go in service to him. You all need to really get that into your spirit. When I say get that, it's one of those things that you need to understand. When this becomes part of your nature, that this will start to push you every day. That you start having what I call spiritual purpose. In a sense of when you come to the church building, as I've said so many times, we're all individual churches. But when you come to the church building, you're coming with a specific purpose. You're not coming to see what people have on. You're not coming to see what kind of car they're driving. You're not coming to look at any hairstyle, any makeup, any fingernail, none of that stuff. You're coming to connect with God, the one who created you. Amen. The one who gives you life, your sustainer. So you're coming to connect with God. Why? In order to what? To know him like you've never known him before. In case you don't know it, I will let you know religion is going out of style. Just to come and do this thing, just to go through the motions, I'm I'm telling you now, it's going out of style. Why? Because the devil has raised his game. Did y'all hear me? He's raised his game. You can keep playing church all you want while hell is breaking loose all around you in your household, on your job, and you'll realize that religion is not cutting it. So now you need to understand that you don't need to hear about God from someone else. You need to know God for yourself so you can boldly go before the throne of righteousness and declare what you need of him through Jesus Christ. Amen? then you're able to understand that now you have a thirst and a hunger for him, that now you want to grow. So now you'll start reading his word every day the same way you breathe and, and, and eat food. Why? Because you hunger and thirst to grow more spiritually. Why is that important? Because you need to understand just as much we can have a physical war going, uh, bet- going overseas between Ukraine and Russia, there's a spiritual battle. 
that's going on in the heavenlies. And let me tell you something. It's not a foreign war. No, it's a personal war. You need to understand that the devil every day is after your soul. Let me make that clear. Not your neighbor, not your mama's, but your soul. He is drowning, and he will grab anyone who he can to stop him from going down or to go down with him. So it's important that you grow in his word in order to know how to fight this spiritual battle that we are in. Lastly, Jesus gave us a command. He said to go and make disciples. That is our responsibility as the church, as individual believers, is to go and take the word of God that we receive from the temple out into our communities, into our families, so people can see the church, so you can be the church and you have the responsibility of serving God by introducing others to Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Moving into today's message, we're continuing part two of something that we started last week, and it's the cost of compromise. We was looking at 1 Samuel chapter 15, looking at verse 1 as we move through this, just in a sense of a review. One of the things that we talked about, starting from verse 1, let me re- just read it first. It says, Samuel said to Saul, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you king over his people Israel. So listen now to the message from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they waylaid them as they came up from Egypt. Now go, attack the Amalekites and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death the men and women, children and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. Going through this very quickly. First point I made last week was to remember what the Lord has done for you. Don't forget what the Lord has done for you. I don't care how many degrees that you have, realize that, listen, it was the Lord who blessed you, amen, to get in good education. It was the Lord who promoted you. It was God. Remember what the Lord has done for you, amen? Secondly, we need to also understand that when it comes to your enemies, let God deal with your enemies, You don't have to worry about trying to get people back. God said himself, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So when you're plotting and planning, trying to get someone back, realize what you're doing. You're saying, God, I don't need you. I'll take it from here and do it myself. In a sense, you're now acting as though you are an antichrist. Are you hearing me? Stop trying to get people back and leave it in the Lord's hand. Now, if you're still struggling with that, that means you're still struggling your love walk with God because he must be first, amen? Anything that's in front of him is an idol, therefore, that has you operating in a place of idolatry, amen? So we need to understand we're going to allow God to deal with our enemies. We understand that portion of the scripture that we looked at of this passage was the Amalekites. Can someone tell me about these Amalekites? Say it. They're cowards. Why? Why are they cowards? They attack from behind. Who did they attack? Come on, y'all talk to me. See, we, we, we come to learn this thing. We ain't just come to sit right here and sit. Uh, uh, uh. Talk to me. If I'm going to study all week to present this thing, we got to go back and forth. We're in this together. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, the infants, the children. See, you all need, we need to talk about this so y'all can feel this, so y'all can understand why God made the decision that he made in the sense of saying, listen, I'm going to pay them back. I, I, I'll get them. And what I love so much about God, whew, Jesus, God is patient. Thank God he's patient with us. Amen? How many of you know if God would have showed his vengeance towards us when we were 17 or 18, huh? Wilding out at 25. Amen? Thank God! Whew! That he's patient with us, amen? Praise God. Don't sit right there and be judging people. You can't judge nobody. You sit right here looking at your child and you want them because you saved. Your child now comes. I mean, they're born, praise God, while you're saved, but don't act like they still don't have some stuff in, in them that came from you. <laughs> sit right here, I can't believe they're, they're going out there drinking and partying. You, you, you went out there and partying, Remember? 
You got to go through the process. I don't know who this is for. It's probably for some mamas. <laughs> you, you, this is a process. Uh, that, 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 that cake is not baked in 30 minutes. You, you have to put all the ingredients in that cake, but it's a process. You cannot rush the process. Too often, we try to do the work of the Holy Spirit. Our responsibility is to pray. You pray for that child, you keep that child covered in prayer, and you put your confidence in God. Amen? Put your confidence in God. But we understand those Amalekites, as they say, they were, they were cowards. They attacked, they attacked the Israelites coming out of Egypt while they were weary, understanding why did they do this, because these are the offsprings of Esau. This is still a family feud that has been going on uh, for many, for many years and now it gets to the place that God is saying, now I'm going to get these Amalekites back for what they did. So he said, I am going to give Saul the assignment of destroying them. We understand from last week that we all have a God-given assignment. Let me say that again. We all have a God-given assignment. The thing is, we cannot look at someone else's assignment and get it confused with ours. God has an assignment that's specifically for you. Every assignment that we receive will not always be an acute assignment. Every assignment will not be an easy assignment. But remember when you got saved and you told the Lord, not my will, but your will be done. I totally yield myself to you. All this stuff that we came and said, Lord, have your way, what? In me. If you can use anybody, you can use me. Understand when he calls you on the carpet and say, now it's time, it's time for me to use you. Don't start having a debate. Well, well why, why do you want me to do that? My, my neighbor, it seemed like they don't, they don't have the same, assi same assignment. No, no, no. This don't have nothing to do with the neighbor. Has something to do with you. He gives you who you need to block. So I used the example, huh? I have to block three people. Remember that last week? That was my assignment, right? One to the left, one to the, to the right, one in the middle. Boom, boom. Sacrifice my body. But the beautiful thing is, no kick was ever blocked. We're going to pick up this thing right now in a sense of here it is, King Saul has an assignment. It's not an easy assignment. And the assignment that he gets comes from not the governor, not the president, but it comes from the Lord God Almighty. Amen? So let's pick this up. And it says this, do not spare them, put to, put to death the women, the children, and infants, cattle and sheep, camels and donkeys. It says, so Saul summoned the men and mustered them at Tulane, 200,000 foot soldiers, 10,000 from Judah. Saul went to the city of Amalek and set an ambush in the ravine. Then he said to the Kenites, go away. Leave the Amalekites so that I do not destroy you along with them. For you show kindness to all the Israelites when they came up out of Egypt. So the Canaanites moved away from the Amalekites. First point that I want to make this morning is separation can save you. Separation can save you. You can process that however you need to in your mind. You need to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. But I don't know who the word is for, but you need to understand this. Sometimes you must separate in order to survive. Did you hear me this morning? I can just close the book right there and we can just leave. Sometimes you must separate in order to survive. Now, when you hear separation, the first thing people jump to is marriage. I'm not talking about that. I'm even talking about your job. Sometimes you have to separate from a job in order to survive. 
You want me to go a little deeper? Sometimes you have to separate from family members. Ah, oh, shucky ducky now. Listen now, in order to survive. And when I'm talking about survive, I'm not just talking about, I'm not just talking about physically survive. I'm talking about in order to spiritually survive. Some of you need to understand that you're not going to be able to grow spiritually until you leave the mother and the father. See, the word makes it very clear. It's not the word that, that's the problem. It's us. It's us. Saul shows up and he tells the Canites. Just giving you a little bit of history, trying to move through this quickly. You need to understand the Canites, why they show kindness to the Israelites. The Canites are, 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 are Moses' uh, father-in-law's people, Jethro. They were kind to the Israelites. Why? Every word in the Bible has a point. Why is that in there? So we need to understand this. Don't forget those who were kind to you. Don't forget those when you were going through who was kind to you. Don't forget when you're back on top, those who were kind to you. How soon we forget. You, so you forget about that person who prayed you through. Now you're ready to kick it with everybody. Let's go hang out. Yeah, man, let, let's go turn it up. No, 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 no. Where was the person when it was all turned down? So he tells them, move away from them. And the Canites, you see what they said? <laughs> so the Canites moved away from the Amalekites. Why? Because they did not want to be destroyed. Amen? Let's continue on. It says, okay. Then Saul attacked the Amalekites all the way from Havla to Shur, near the eastern border of Egypt. He took Agag, king of the Amalekites, alive, and all his people he totally destroyed with the sword. But Saul and the army spared Agag and the best of the sheep and cattle, the fat calves and the lambs, everything that was good. These they were unwilling to destroy completely, but everything that was despised and weak, they totally destroyed. We see now compromise being made by the king. As I've said so many times, especially within the body of the church, times have changed. So that's why now we're doing stuff on PowerPoint. I use my iPad to bring the message. But one thing that will never change, even though the method may change, the method can, the, the, the message can never change. Amen? The word is the word. The same word that was preached a thousand years ago is the same word that's being preached today. The same word that got grandmama Nim through is the same word that's going to get you through. Amen? But now you see that the king now is now compromising the word. What can cause compromise? Just put a couple of things down. If it hits you, don't move. We won't know it's you. One of the first things that can cause you to compromise is people-pleasing. More so than you doing what the Lord has told you to do, you start people-pleasing. Listening to everyone else tell you what you should be doing, more so than what did the Lord tell you to do. How many of us will end up going down or have gone down wrong roads because we listened to someone, but yet you knew in your spirit, mm, God told me not to go. Amen? Another thing that can cause you to compromise is, listen, putting good before God. We see it very clearly. It says, but, but Saul and the, and the army spared Agag. Now, notice the word came to who? It came to Saul. All of a sudden, he has the army all in it. Paul, uh, Saul and the army spared Agag and the best of the sheep and the cattle, the fat calves and the lamb. Everything that was good. God didn't ask him to save, to save anything that was good. He said to destroy what? Everything. Everything. 
Sometimes we have to get rid of good friends because we need to understand that they're not godly friends. Let me say that again. Sometimes we have to get rid of good friends because they're not godly friends. I can look back over my life and so many fellows that I ran with and I had a good time with, but I had to make a choice. Either I was going to stay and keep kicking it with the fellas or I was going to go to football practice. But they were good dudes, so I thought, until you start finding out, well, where is he now? Oh, he's in jail. Well, what about Peanut? Oh, he's dead. Wow. Some of you right now, what's the struggle? What's the struggle? You keep trying to look at the good, and you need to understand, is it of God? That becomes the bigger question. Your flesh is so used to things being good, but when you start being renewed again, it's not about what's good, it's what's about God in your life. It's mighty quiet, but we're going to keep going, Holy Ghost. We're going to keep rolling. Another thing that can cause compromise is when you start putting your will before his will. Let me say it again. Every assignment ain't easy. Every assignment is not cute. But God has appointed you to do it. We need to stop looking at everybody and we want their assignment. And the thing is, can you handle the pressure that comes along with it? Ooh, must be nice. He get to go up there. Every Sunday, he just preached the word. Y'all think it just started this morning? Just woke up this morning, just walk up. I'm just going to walk up here and let me just open the Bible. Just... Oh, you think this is where it ends? This is where it starts? No, 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 no. No, do you know how many decisions have to be made that goes against your emotions? It's not about emotions. It's not about feelings. It's about God. Whew. Get ready. Hold on right here. We have too many mamas compromising what God has told you to do with the child because you are trying to do what's good. You are ruining the child because you want to give them everything and now they're out of touch with reality. You are compromising the word of God with your own father wounds and own mother wounds and now you're trying to say, I'm going to make sure my child never experienced that and now you're playing God. What is the cost of the compromise? I'm going to raise my daughter to be a boss. Be a boss of what? <laughs> no, I'm serious now. You, you want to raise her to be a boss? Really? Be a boss of what? Because I want to know how, how much boss she going to get. I mean, how boss is she going to be? No, this is real word now. Y'all need to understand now. I'm a man. I'm a, I mean, I'm, a, I'm talking about a man, man. I'm a man's man. I'm talking about a godly man. I'm a boss. Let me tell you what we can't have in the house. We can't have two bosses. We can't have two bosses. There's got to be one boss. Ooh, you, you, ooh, has to be careful. I ain't got to be careful about nothing. I'm very clear. It's one boss. And I'm not saying this in an egotistical way. What I'm saying is I'm doing it from a word standpoint. When you are the man, therefore you are responsible. You are responsible for the direction of your household, how it's going to go, how it's going to flow. Now, here's the thing. I did not say that means that you're married to a weak woman because let me tell you, that, that woman right there, she ain't weak at all. You better be a man's man. But that's fine when you know your place. When we can clearly understand our roles. She can hold it down all by herself. But let me tell you what she does know. Listen to what I'm talking about, ladies. Understand this. When she understands 
she was never built to be a boss. I know y'all looking at me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ladies, you were never built to be a boss. Yeah, just let that soak in. Just go on and just, yep. Yeah, I'm going to sit down on that one right there, Jack. I'm just going to sit. Y'all need to let this just soak in. Because y'all let IG, Facebook tell you you a boss. They are lying to you. They're going to have you jacked up. You're never going to find a man. You're never going to have a man. You're never going to be able to keep a man because you are a boss. Now, I'm going to go ahead and help you. I'm going to set you free. When you understand that you can be a strong woman, you can have 900 degrees, you can be all that in a bag of chips, and you know what you're looking for. No, you ain't looking for no puppet. You ain't looking for no do boy. You are looking for a godly, a godly man. Well, Pastor, I, 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 I just don't see it. It ain't about you seeing it. It's about you believing it. It's about you praying. It's about you being able to wait. Because guess what? He who finds, ah, shuck your ducky now. He who finds a wife, huh? He finds a good thing and he finds favor. Oh, yeah. 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 Now, let me go to the other side of this. So now, for you women who are ready to be godly women, let me tell you something. Don't you compromise your standard. Don't you sit right there and see, where he good. Mm -mm. Is he godly? Is he, is he godly? Does he have something that he has, author that has authority over his life? Because if you're not careful, see, that's when you understand. You got to have something else above yourself that you submit to. Because if you're not, your flesh will get the best of you. Selfishness will come up and you'll make it all about you. But when you are knowing that God is the final authority in my life, in her life, <laughs> changes the game. Changes the game. Oh, I'm so mad with him. Well, well. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> We've got to stop this. That's why it's vital. That's why it's vital for the church, listen now, for the church to develop programs that teach men to be godly men. To teach programs, have programs to teach women, young girls, to be godly women. Because you want to sit right here and try to bring them to church, but then next you want IG to raise them. How is this going to work? No, we, we, we have to do something. I thank God for the brothers who came up yesterday and we're working in the student center, cleaning it out, doing what we need to do. Because the vision that I see for the young men who we're going to get off the streets and teach them how to be godly men, Godly men. That doesn't mean they lose their swag. They don't become corny. No, they just know how to be godly men. Are y'all getting this? I mean, I love God with all my heart, but I still lay hands in a minute. I will set you free. Oh, gosh. I'm trying to. Why is this important? See, y'all need to understand this. Let me, I just got to give some balance to this. See, we have too many people afraid to be believers because they start thinking when you become a believer, you become soft. When they need to understand, it's your love now that will propel you forward. Some of y'all looking, ooh, so pastor saying he'll still lay hands, he'll still, he'll, he'll still fight. Oh, well, I fight real quick. When you are, listen, when you threaten my peace, when you threaten my household, because guess what you're doing? You're threatening my love. I'm not going to bother anybody. But mind my business. Put me on my deck. Let me listen to some jazz music. I'm not going to bother anybody. But if you decide to ever, if the devil just decide to have you bite a piece of fruit and tell you, surely you won't die if you go to pastor's house at 3 in the morning. Understand this. I will meet you with all the fury that heaven can bring. 
But understand why I'm doing this. People, ooh, that's, that's out of your anger. No, it's not out of my anger. It's out of my love. It's out of my love. I vowed to protect her. And I'm going to use everything I have to do that. That doesn't take nothing away from my love for God. It strengthens it. Are y'all getting this? Ladies, you need to understand on the, side, on the other side of this. As they say, take care of your, that's your man. That's your man. Don't be so selfish and make it about you. No. Godly man has a mission from God, just like the king. Woman, what is her responsibility? To submit. So we get that wrong when we hear submit. I ain't submitting to nobody. That's funny though. But you, you go to your job and you submit. You submit. When they tell you to be at six in the morning, you submit to that. Whatever they tell you to do, you submit. You don't have no problem. But we have to submit and understand what submit means. Submit means you're subbing upon the mission. I'm just getting up under the mission on where we are going. Now, before you brothers get happy, I don't know how we're on this, Jack, but we're going to go with it. Let me tell you something. But here's the thing, brother. Don't sit right there and be, yeah, yeah, you heard that, baby. You got to submit. Get up on the mission. You ain't gave her no mission. You, you ain't gave her no mission. All you got is a bunch of love making and, and some money, and I'll buy you a dress. I'll take you out. But what's the mission? Where are we going? Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know where we going. You know, we just, you know, we just, we just going to kick it. Kick it? Kick it? No, 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 no. Got to have a mission. Whatever the mission may be. Mission may be totally different from mine. Mission. Hey, babe, I want you to understand. I've been called to preach the gospel. You sure you want to be married to a preacher? Because that's what I am. You have to go with it now. You understand how this is going to work now. It's going to be sometimes I won't be at home all the time because I have to be moved. But it comes along with the mission. Are you with that? I'm with it. You do understand I have to pull away sometimes so I can study and make sure everything is good. Are you with that? Yeah, I'm with the mission. Understand how it works. Now, I'm going to need you to help me to bring some things to pass, what God has called me to do. I'm with it. Let's do it. No, this ain't always going to be pretty. Okay, let's do it. But now, since we have understanding and we're on the same mission, listen now, God-given mission. Whatever it may be. Now, listen, when you hear that, I'm not just talking about it being a thing of just uh, being in church. What I'm saying, I don't know what the mission may be. The mission may be for you to start a security company. Baby, this is what I need you to do. Can you keep the books for all the bookings that I get with the security? I, I can do that. You do understand I have to work at night sometimes. I understand that, baby, but we're going to make this thing work. Let's do it. We are in this thing together. Y'all got it? Back to the cost of compromise. <laughs> Give y'all two minutes. We're going to have to finish this. We're gonna have to, I thought it was going to be a two-part series. Are y'all getting something from this? And I don't. Okay, all right, we're going to make this last little, let's, let's make this point, then we're going to pull up. We're going to pull up right here. So we understand that Saul attacks the Malachites all the way from Havlah to Shur, near the eastern border of Egypt. He took Agag the king and the Malachites alive and all his people he totally destroyed with the sword. But Saul and the army spared Agag and the best of the sheep and cattle, the fat calves and lambs, everything that was good. These they were unwilling, see that's where their will got in the way to destroy completely, but everything that was despised and weak, they totally destroyed. Mm. Your assumption in front of God. You cannot put your assumption, which you assume is good, in front of God. Amen? Let me see. Did I put that? Where, where, 
Where my clicker? All right, we got to keep clicking, click on. But the big question is this: In verse ten, it says, "Then the word of the Lord came to Samuel." It says, "This I regret that I have made Saul king, because he has turned away from me, and has not carried out my instructions." I ask you this question, and we're just going to stop right here, and we'll pick this up next week. We're going to finish it. But can the Lord count on you? I, I know your job can count on you because you're getting paid. But can God count? Can God count on you? Can you accept your God-given assignment? can you accept it and do your God-given assignment? Listen to this, wholeheartedly. Can you follow the Lord's instructions? And last, last, I'll just wrap up on this passage right here. Can you finish the drill? What has the Lord assigned you to do that you are not doing? Let me say that again. What has the Lord, listen to me now, What has the Lord assigned you to do and you're not doing? What has the Lord called you to do in this church that you would do, listen to me now, if you were getting paid for it? What is it that you've been called to do, but you're saying now you're too busy? But I guarantee you, if we took it from the system, the world system, and start paying you $5, you'll do it. Mm Mm-mm. I'm not talking about that. We're talking about now the motives of your heart. What has God called you to do and said, why don't you just do it? Just do it and watch him provide. You need to understand the moment he destined you for the assignment, he appointed you to do it. Not anyone else. He appointed you to do it. Don't allow the Lord, listen to this, to regret, listen to this now, to regret promoting you. Don't let him regret, Lord, if you, oh, I, I'm struggling, but if you just give me that job, whoo, I, 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 I'll serve you. He's promoted you. Does he have any regrets? You spent more time with him when you were in the valley. You spent more time with him while you were going through. But you need to have a love for him that says, I remember, I remember when you were there with me in the valley. And because you were with me in the valley, I... And you didn't leave me, I'm not gonna leave, I'm not gonna leave you. I need him every day, y'all. I don't know about y'all. Who needs him every day? I, every day. Every day. You have people who get excited on payday. I get excited every, every day. Stand to your feet. We're going to have to stop right there. I've got to get y'all up at it. Give God some praise in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Listen, if you're here today and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, listen, there is no other way of you being able to get to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Stop depending on your grandmother's prayers. It's you. You must confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. You must do that. Second, if you're here and you need to rededicate, get back into right standings with God. Today is the day to get back into right standings. Thirdly, if you feel as though God is calling you to get to this place and make it your your spiritual home for growth, Get to the place which God has called you. 
Stop looking for the perfect church when you settle for going to the imperfect restaurants. Stop looking for the perfect church. Oh, I would if they had a drama. Oh, I would if they had this. But you go to Longhorn and they don't have 57 sauce, you still stay there and eat. Oh, y'all out of butter? Uh -huh. Okay, give me the broccoli. You still make it work. But now y'all have to when it comes to church picking. Got to make sure everything right. No, come and get right. Amen? Come and get right. I presented to you three things. First, first to receive Christ. Secondly, to rededicate. Thirdly, to be born again if you're in need of any of those three things. Please come forward at this time. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste. Hallelujah. Purchased. Washed. Yeah. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my song. This is my song. Praising. Praising my Savior all the day long. Hallelujah. Give God some praise. Everything, everything that you have belongs to God. Everything comes from God. He is the source. It's been resourced out to you. Make sure you honor God with your substance, with your finances, and with your life. Amen? Ushers, you may come forward at this time. Miracles you move, search Right now, yeah. You were still showing up at the tomb of Ebenezerus. Your voice is calling me out. Yes. Right now, I know you're able. My God, come through again. You can do it. Never lost. Never lost yeah. Stretch your hands toward the offering. Lord God, we lift this offering up to you, Lord God. We thank you so much for being Jehovah Jireh, our provider, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for just giving us the privilege to sow into your kingdom, Father. Father, I ask right now that you bless and touch, Lord God, this offering, Lord God. Father, bring a 100-fold return to all those who have sown, Lord God. And Father, show yourself strong to those who have a desire, Father God move in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Very quick, I want to share this with you. One of the things that God has placed upon my heart, I want the prayer team to be more active because of the things that are going on in this world today. How I many, you know, the Bible clearly says to pray without ceasing. With the, and I just call it simply a rebirth of the church. We, we, we have people come and you join the church. Once you join the church, you go through new members class, and then you start serving. 
But what I'm understanding or what I'm just starting to feel that even though we'll come to a new church, a lot of us are coming from a different place. You're coming from church hurt. Even though you'll come to church, we can still be suffering from generational curses, father wounds, mother wounds. A lot of times we will pray and understand that it's okay when you're praying by yourself, but sometimes it just take it to another level when you have someone who you can pray with. On the second Sunday is what we're going to call We're going to call it Connect Touch, and we're going to have our prayer team. Uh, Sister Rosin, stand up very quickly. Jackie, if you would, just stand up. These two ladies are also going to have Miss Yvonne. For those who want to be a part of the prayer team, they're simply going to come down to the altar, and what we're going to have is just if you need to just come down and just have someone to pray for you, pray with you, we're going to make that available every second Sunday. Every second Sunday. You're not in this alone. You're not going to sit right there and bear the burdens by yourself. Sometimes you just need a touch, amen? Someone to just touch and agree just to let me know that everything is going to be all right. Someone who can just speak a word over your life, amen? So look forward to Connection Church, uh, Connection Touch starting next month. We will now have announcements. God bless you. Love you all so much. First-time visitors, please fill out a complete visitor card and you'll receive offers to come to one of the other ministry opportunities. Still need your help on the praise team. We audition Wednesday nights at 10:30, and don't forget we also need members to help with Connect Kids Children's Church, ushers, greeters, and audiovisual help. Upcoming events Tuesday nights, 6:30 to 7:30 is our Master Life class. That's our Connection Church Bible study. So. Uh, Saturday, May 20th, Connect Ladies Breakfast Meeting downstairs, 10 a.m. Please RSVP to tccbaby822 at gmail.com. That's tccbaby22 at gmail.com. Sunday, May 21st, family and friends. Um, make sure you register for that event as well so that we can get a number. And that's get me connected. Dot org register for Family and Friends Day, May 21st. Sunday, May 28th, we have Connect Kids Church. We also have new members orientation. And Monday, May 29th, is our first Let's close in prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for such a great worship. Thank you, Lord, for admitting the word for your servant. I say, Lord, that let us be the people of your people, Lord, that we invite you. Lord, that you touch our, touch our heart. Give us, Lord, that not any words of spirit to go out here and tell each other. Hear your word. Know you. But just give us that assignment. Trust you have the faith. Oh, I was just there this week. I said, let us invest 